Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red black infinite damage combo deck featuring Obnixilus alongside All Will Be One. Obnixilus Captive Kingpin introduced in March of the Machine The Aftermath, a 4 mana 4 3 legendary demon with flying and trample, saying whenever one or more opponents each lose exactly one life, put a plus one plus one counter on Obnixilus and then exile the top card of your library until your next end step you may play that card. So it can provide a nice bit of card advantage when paired with these one damage effects, which of course fits perfectly in this sacrifice shell where we have only called anvil draining for one epicure entering the battlefield dealing one damage and then i've also added chandra which can also deal one damage with the plus one ability adding red mana and that can also be very helpful in ramping out an all will be one the five mana enchantment is what we're going to need to set up the infinite damage combo saying whenever we put one or more counters on a permanent or player all will be one that deals that much damage to target opponents creature and opponent controls or planeswalker and opponent controls so note it does not not damage battles, even though it does have good synergy with battles entering the battlefield. In the case of Invasion of Asgol or Invasion of Mercadia, we get to deal 4 damage to any non-battle target with an all will be one on the battlefield, but of course we're playing it for the infinite damage combo, so as soon as we have both Obnixils and all will be one on the battlefield, we just need to kickstart the combo by dealing 1 damage or making the opponent lose 1 life, which will result in a plus 1 plus 1 counter added to Obnixils, as well as exiling the top card of our library, and then since we added a counter to open Ixils, we get to trigger all will be one which can deal one damage to the opponent directly once again triggering open Ixils, and that's how we set up the infinite damage loop of course it's not the easiest combo to assemble since we need to get a four and five mana permanent on the battlefield and they don't always provide immediate value so they can be pretty rough in a metagame full of ragdos midrange decks that are more finely tuned packing answers like invoke despair which can also answer our enchantment so it's going to be pretty rough to assemble the combo in those matchups but hopefully we can still see it in action here today and then to help round out the deck and to find all these missing combo pieces we can also count on a fable of the mirror breaker of course great synergy with the treasure tokens generated by the shaman which can also fuel our only cult anvil which is one of the more consistent ways of enabling of nixels as turn after turn we can drain the opponent for one make a construct token by sacrificing artifacts and that way exile the top card of our library growing up nixels which can maybe even win the game without needing our infinite damage combo and then to enable Oni Cult Anvil, we need some artifacts. So Epicure and Harvester making blood tokens when they enter the battlefield are also very important. And then Voltage Surge, a cheap removal spell that ties into the deck nicely, as we can sacrifice all these artifacts to potentially deal 4 damage as opposed to 2. Although Voltage Surge unable to deal damage to our battles. So that's one major drawback, since we are packing 2 copies of Invasion of Mercadia, which lets us discard a card and draw 2. Can transform into the Flame Bright, which can also be a nice win condition. And then the invasion helps us dig towards our combo pieces like Obnixilus and All Will Be One. Maybe discard an extra copy if we happen to draw two of them. And then Invasion of Oskol also has excellent synergy here, both tying into the Obnixilus half of the deck, as well as going quite well with All Will Be One, since we can make the opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker when it enters, and the opponent loses one life, which then helps us trigger Obnixilus, so that can also potentially kickstart the infinite damage combo. And then Chandra is also quite good in this deck since all our cards are red, so we can find them with a second plus one ability. And the first one, good with Obnixilus, can generate more mana to potentially cast a bunch of spells from exile as well. And then a mana base, just a lot of red-black dual lands to smooth things out. And the channel lands, especially the Abandoned Mire, can be useful at getting back Obnixilus from the graveyard. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got Anvil to enable Obnixilus, as well as Invasion potentially, dealing that one point of damage. So we'll try it. May need some more artifacts to enable Anvil in the first place. Opponent are red-white, with a farmhand, so it looks like a mid-range deck. No need to voltage search the farmhand. Although I guess it does make our invasion a bit worse. So that's still an argument for taking it out. Yeah, maybe that's fine. Third of Nixilis. Okay, I'll run out Anvil.
and a restoration can eventually get the farmhands back as well. So yeah, not the best matchup for invasion. Hopefully it's a good matchup for Obnixilus. And now a Fable on 3 can discard a few copies. Opponent discarding a companion, which can draw them a card. Taking that over a planes. So they've got all the mana they need. Four mana, of course, Wandering Emperor territory. For now, at least one of Nixilis can go, and then probably the Invasion too. Okay, so Shaman can attack, and then we'll take it from there. And there's Emperor. The treasure will help us enable Anvil. That's coming off. And a minus two. So, got a couple options here. Definitely interested in playing Obnixilus. Now we could sack the treasure to the Anvil's ability, triggering Obnixilus. Or we can Voltage Surge, take out the Wandering Emperor. Although we could also just attack it next turn. So maybe we just pass. And then hang on to Voltage Surge just in case. Wouldn't be able to deal 4 damage to the Architect, however. Strike fast and, strike hard. and a Bangbuster's fine. Okay, take our draw. Chandra's excellent too. We're just missing an all will be one to end the game. A few ways we can go about it. Can play Chandra adding mana dealing one damage, play invasion afterwards. That digs us pretty deep and leaves us with a Chandra on the battlefield. And then I may also be able to protect Chandra with a token from Anvil. Now, if we want to grow up Nixilis, then we need to target the opponent as opposed to the Wandering Emperor, but that may be okay. A land would be nice. There we go. And then play Invasion. Probably discarding a Voltage Surge at this point. Keep a backup of Nixilis. Which is going to prove to be quite useful. And then Epicure is an option too now. Can transform our invasion, ignore Emperor, but then it can minus on Omnixilus, which is not ideal. So maybe take out Emperor first. And then Epicure also triggers Omnixilus. Although I wouldn't be able to cast much from Exile here. Bangbuster draws. And another Anvil, sadly, will go to waste. Can still activate the other Anvil just to make an extra creature to block with. Sacking the Blood Token, keeping the treasure. Since mana could be a bottleneck. And abandon Meyer. Alright, pass it back. Got a 7 power Domnixilus already. Companion to draw, so no sweeper at least this turn. Can jump with Epicure, since we've got another one. If companion attacks, it implies another Emperor, so that one stays back. And Bangbuster draws. Well, an uncontested Omnixilus takes over a game very quickly. 
Chandra probably just making mana here, since we'll get to exile a bunch of cards with Omnixilus. A land for now. Let's see if we can do better. Play Apicure. Another one. This one's untapped at least. Copy Apicure with Reflection. And another land. Okay, sack Blood Token to Anvil. Could also uh, use the Blood Token discarding Cliffs. And another land, alright. So, yeah, if I use the Blood Token, I guess that's fine. See what else we get. I'll land. And Omnixilus can go face. And then they want to attack with Epicure since their opponent can make an extra 1 1 in the process. Opponent falls to 4. And Itali, alright, that's why they're splashing red. Let's see what they can uh, find here to try and stabilize Harvester and Strangle. So they can deal with Reflection, but Obnixilus will stay alive and cross the finish line on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and we've got Harvester into Fable. Could also play Anvil first, but Harvester probably the preferred option. Up against the red aggro. So it's all about protecting our life total. And then sooner or later, try and set up the combo. At least no additional creatures for now. Does make it more likely that our opponent can answer a harvester, but so be it. If it trades for a burn spell, it at least soaks up a bit of damage. A lightning strike goes upstairs. And uh, yeah, probably play Fable. And then question is whether to sack Harvester just to kill a single Phoenix chick. I think I keep it around for one turn in case your opponent has like a Thundering Raichu that I need to double block. So I'm not even going to attack with a Harvester. I don't think this is a race we're necessarily winning. Although possible that our opponent has a burn spell, kills one of my two blockers, and then still plays a Raichu. Nope, Lightning Strike goes upstairs. And a Swiss Spear is next. Happy to trade. We'll see if they have any prowess triggers before blockers. Lightning Strike now kills Harvester, so Swiss Spear can get in for two. Fair enough. Opponent is down to one card in hand at least. And uh, we have Anvil times two to help us uh, stabilize. May not need Invasion of Mercadia as much. Could also see a world where we just don't need All Will Be One, but I'm still going to try and set up the combo. So this turn maybe just discard Invasion. If I draw an untapped land, great. If not, I can use a treasure to play both Anvils. And then keep Fable as another way of digging for Obnixilus. Or I can just discard Cliff since we're likely finding a land in the additional draw steps. Alright, that's good. So now I can attack. And go Anvil. Plus maybe another Fable as opposed to double Anvil. Although double Anvil is pretty nice. Sack Blood Token over Treasure Token, I think. And pass it back. And then I can jump with a 1-1 Construct and sacrifice it to drain for one. So we're not taking any real damage. Could also double block in case they didn't pick up another instance, but doesn't seem necessary. Can keep the Swift Spear in check.
And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And we've got all will be one. A decent early curve. Just needs Omnixilus to combo off. And I think we're okay playing Epicure on one. Even though it is potentially a way to enable the Obnixilus combo once we get our enchantment down. Opponent with turn 1 planes, so... Could be an aggro deck, in which case Voltage Surge is going to be very helpful. Especially if we need to take out a turn 2 Thalia. Nothing from our opponent, and there's Obnixilus, perfect. So we'd still like to dig for a few lands, perhaps. So, discard Voltage Surge. Even though... It could be great in the matchup, and may as well attack the invasion. So turn 3 Fable also will help hit our land drops, and then Anvil away to kickstart the infinite damage combo. Peacekeeper is going to have a look and disrupt our curve, probably naming Fable. So then we can still play Harvester, and with two blood tokens it can answer the Peacekeeper. So, not a disaster. Although now with Harvester gone, Fable stays expensive. And the presence of Laydown Arms also means they could answer Obnixilus pretty easily. So ideally we play All Will Be One first, and then play Obnixilus and immediately set up the infinite damage combo. Do I just discard Fable at this point with a blood token? I think so. Do want to keep one around to enable Anvil, but want to make sure I hit my land drops. Okay, Chandra's nice, so we can go Chandra into Anvil. Oh, I've never crashed a wedding like this before. And then next turn all will be one, turn after Obnixilus with a few ways of kickstarting the combo. Now the question is whether to sack the blood token here or not. And yeah, probably want the extra blocker, even though we make it easier for the opponent to remove all our artifacts. Sarah Paragon can return some cheap permanents from the graveyard. Peacekeeper goes after Chandra. Probably want to preserve the loyalty, if possible. Invasion's good too. Although if I invasion, Pun can just sack Peacekeeper and then bring it back with Paragon next turn. So, can uh, play all will be one and then plus Chandra for mana to deal one damage. And the one damage cannot go after battle, so it just goes upstairs here. And then I can use Anvil to drain for one. Okay. So, we'll see if we can keep Chandra around. Could be our enabler for the Obnixilus combo here. Don't expect too much instant speed removal necessarily. Another late on arms will do it. Okay. So, what we can do now is sack Anvil to itself for the one damage. Next time, I'll or Invasion could also do it since it uh, will also make the opponent lose one life, which is good enough. So, Invasion deals four damage, makes the opponent sacrifice, but first take out Paragon. Don't really care if Paragon survives or not if they put a counter on it with uh, Wandering Emperor. All we care about is the opponent losing one life, which is soon going to turn into infinite damage and our opponent concedes, so they must be familiar with the combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got Epicure to enable Anvil, couple removal spells and Invasion to dig towards additional combo pieces. P 
opponent on maybe a domain Atraxa, a ramp deck. Okay, for now play Anvil. And we've got a Fable on three. That resolves. And next turn we can go digging with our invasion, maybe even transform it right away. Opponent passes. So can discard maybe one invasion of Asgol and a land, since I wouldn't mind a fourth one. Okay. So now we've got the option of another fable, or we could invasion, see what else we pick up. Discarding springs. Alright, not the best set of draws, but that's okay. Now let's go ahead and attack the invasion. And then we can still play an extra fable here. Maybe overextending into a sweeper somewhat. Opponent could have a sunfall in their deck for all we know. So maybe a reason to hang on to Fable for an extra turn. And yep, there it is. We do get a Reflection. And we'll get back on the board here. Invasion being sorcery speed here makes it a bit awkward if our opponent keeps up the incubator token. And then I should hang on to my two lands to discard to Fable. Activate Anvil. Could maybe still use the treasure as opposed to the blood token, but it's a close call. I think the blood tokens can be more useful. Ossification goes for Reflection. Now let's discard the Cliffs. Another Anvil. Okay. And then if they animate to 4-4, we can play Invasion 2nd main. And we'll sacrifice the treasure here. With five lands in play, we can cast. All will be one. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, double anvil's just gonna drain them to death here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got Epicure into double anvil. So if we ever find Omnixilus, these can synergize quite nicely. All will be one would not be our best draw, admittedly. So we can kickstart this engine. Okay, get in for two. And make two more 1-1s. One Voltage Surge can also be cast for 4 damage, sacrificing an artifact. And a Fable for now. So we could hang on to Voltage Surge. And then next turn tap out for Invasion. So we can maybe cast a Voltage Surge at instant speed. The only concern is a Shield Root on turn 4, which I can answer with Invasion if I kill the Shaman, but not the other way around. So maybe we should just be mana efficient here. Uh, 
And then we're secretly hoping for the opponent to tap out for Shieldred. Could always blind channel Abandoned Mire, hoping to mill a creature. Not sure if that's the best idea. Opponent getting rid of Invoke Despair and Chandra, so their curve goes quite high. Something like a Brotherhood's End would be devastating, destroying all our artifacts. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, even if they had a shield root, it would not have stabilized them. Opponent probably just afraid to commit anything to the board when we have four untapped mana. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Turn to Invasion of Asgol. Plenty of spot removal to clear a path for the Shaman token from our Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which can then ramp into All Will Be One, maybe help find Omenixilis as well. Opponent on uh, potentially a multicolor deck here. Headquarters on one, and a Mirex on two. So it could be a domain deck, which does have access to Leyline Binding as an answer for All Will Be One. Herd Migration gets a basic. Well, opponents can go over the top of a lot of mid-range decks and gain a lot of life with Atraxa, but if we can set up an infinite damage combo, that might still get them. But uh, Leyline Binding certainly a concern, since that can disrupt our combo at instant speed for just one mana. So it's possible I'll need both copies of All Will Be One, and I don't want to discard any. Don't think Voltage Surge is going to be all that necessary. Can maybe take out a Topiary Stomper. Bone goes with the tapped Proving Grounds, and there's a Leyline Binding. Going for probably the Shaman. Okay, still get to discard and draw. And double Voltage Surge can go. Found Anvil. So we can play that and a uh, Cliffs. And then next turn we can deploy our first All Will Be One. And then we're just an Obnixilus away from the combo, as Anvil can enable it with a 1 damage. So Invasion for Ramp, next turn we could see a powerful 7 drop already. So our opponent's deck is functioning according to plan. Okay, so we'll have a limited window to top deck Obnixilus here. Invasion with All Will Be One in play also gets quite a bit better, dealing an extra 4 damage when it enters the battlefield. And there's a tally. Okay, hopefully the hits aren't too bad. Opponent found our third All Will Be One here, and a Sunfall to clear the board, which they're gonna decline to cast. Not sure if our opponent has any synergies with All Will Be One. I guess they have their own battle here, which could deal 3 damage, so that's not too bad. And uh, Invasion, a nice answer to Itali. Okay, so every top deck we could just win the game. For now a Harvester. So play Invasion to take care of Itali. And 4 damage goes upstairs. And then I can play Harvester. And I have the option of copying Harvester. And then attack with a copy. And still have a mana left over to sack a blood token to maybe discard all will be one and draw. Do we try and attack Invasion or go face is a question. I think I'll just uh, go for the Invasion here. And then maybe I should just use a blood token now to get the extra 1-1 one, one from Anvil, even though I may end up regretting losing my all will be one. Okay, pass it back. So if another sweeper happens, I can at least sack the construct with Anvil. And an Archangel of Wrath is gonna clean up both the Reflection and Harvester now. Okay. That happens. 
So it's clear that we're not going to win the game the fair way here by uh, dealing damage. We need to find our Obnixilis. Okay, so let's get a redraw here from our blood token. Epic here is another redraw, although I won't have the mana to necessarily combo kill right now. So just go with Harvester and pass a turn. But every draw step the opponent gets is another chance for them to find Leyline Binding to disrupt our combo. So our window of comboing the opponent may have closed already. Atraxa keeping up Proving Ground so they didn't keep up white mana. Finds plenty of goodies including another Binding. So our opponent's got the full grip. And they hadn't played a land yet, so now they still have access to Binding. Yeah, that's going to be too much for us to overcome, I'm afraid. Opponent transforms their battle as well, which also gives them more mana. So plenty of ways to cast a Leyline Binding. But they tapped out for Stomper. Alright, so we still actually have the capability of killing the opponent. So do we sack the blood token now, or do we wait until next turn? I think I should go for it now, because I may not have the mana to sack a bunch of blood tokens next turn and still play up Nixilis afterwards. Because yeah, if I untap, sack blood token, play Apicure, sack another blood token, I would need to draw up Nixilis and a land in those draw steps. So I think I'm just better off doing this now. Could also draw another Apicure. Cliffs is not it, so yeah. Has to be open Ixilis right now, but we couldn't find it. Alright, I think uh, now the game is definitely out of reach. So, doesn't matter too much what we do from here. Just gotta pass it back. Yeah, everything was in place. Saw about a third of our library. So, yeah, sometimes open Ixilis is hard to find. So now our opponent's got a firm grasp on the game. And I don't think they're gonna let it slip. Yeah, the Awakened Skyclave is still there. Maybe should have tried to double block it anyway. But we technically have another draw step here, just out of curiosity. And an Epicure for another redraw. And a land, so would not have found Omnixilus either way. Okay, GG's. Definitely had some more windows to find Omnixilus than I thought we would have. Harvester down. So yeah, this is potentially one of the matchups where actually having a combo to deal infinite damage is worth it, since as you can see the opponent's gaining a lot of life between Archangel and Atraxa. So getting there by sacrificing creatures to anvils Unlikely to get there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Anvil alongside a double harvester to enable it. Invasion giving us even more removal. Facing blue-white. Is it control? Is it soldiers? That is the question. And a Bangbuster points towards control. Okay, so start with Harvester. And then next turn we could deploy Chandra, although it could be under pressure from the Bangbuster. Opponent passes, so missing their third land drop, not even going for Bangbuster activation. So must mean they have a counter spell in hand. So if that's the case, which card do we not mind getting countered? Probably another Harvester. So we can attack for three. And run it out. The 
uh, resolved. Well, at least we've got quite a bit of pressure now. Opponent now draws with the bank buster. Can also consider discarding invasion to one of the blood tokens, since I'm probably not going to need both. Automaton, okay, so it is more of an artifact tribal deck. Still okay discarding one invasion, even though I could use one. And land is good. So, can just go for Obnixilis, could go Chandra into invasion, which I also like. Although then we have to hope they cannot crew Bankbuster next turn. Or I can just leave some Harvesters on defense. But double spelling sounds appealing. And then with Chandra in play, of Nixilis is also going to be much more effective. So I guess we can just attack her battle, and then we'll have it on defense to potentially protect Chandra if they crew Bankbuster. And if not, we have an extra creature to pressure them with. Put an Endulcet their third land. So we still have a game. And the second automaton's fine. And a Disruptor can tap Reaper, and now they actually have enough power to crew Bankbuster and attack Chandra. But no, opponent did not go for it. I'm a bit surprised. So I guess now we could go for Obnixilis, add mana, hope to exile a land. If not, I can still potentially use a blood token. A black source would be ideal. Aww, you're looking a little... I'll take a mountain. So then I can still play Invasion of Mercadia. And then, yeah, both of these are quite valuable actually. Anvil's great with Obnixilis. And Fable's just individually powerful and great with Harvester eventually. I think I'm actually going for Anvil here. I don't think the game's necessarily going to last long enough for us to see the benefits of all three chapters from Fable. And then... Now our opponent has a Bangbuster on defense, of course, so I may not have the best time attacking into the invasion, unless I want to send Reaper. So that one has Menace. And if they double block, it would be a trade. Okay, pass it back. And then we're in prime position to take over with Omnixos, but if we happen to draw... All will be one. We'll just end the game on the spot. Alright, so we got to see our red black Obnixilis combo deck in action. Although I didn't actually get to perform the combo all that often, as I feared it's pretty difficult to set up in today's standard with so many decks packing a ton of interaction. So maybe best to just focus on Obnixilis as a build around card, and then focus on All Will Be One as a separate build around. Maybe can revisit the Storm the Festival deck now with the battles, synergizing with the 5 mana enchantment. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching. Hope Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.